Hi guys! So, as I mentioned in my top 10 upgrades for the TiVo Tornado 3D printer video, one of the best upgrades you can do is to replace the stock drivers with better ones. If you have one of the recent TiVo Tornado or TiVo Tarantula 3D printers, you can easily replace them because they are equipped with MKS Gen L boards and replaceable drivers. My TiVo Tornado is from the first batches, so it has an MKS base board instead. This board is equipped with Allegro A4982 non-replaceable drivers, so I had to buy the MKS Gen L board as well. The board I got already includes 5 TMC2208 drivers. You can check the link in the video description. These drivers are a great choice for the X, Y and Z axis. For the extruder, I will use the LV8729 because they perform better on the extruder. These drivers have a great performance and they can make the stepper motors run silent. I like to run them all at 1x16 steps. And to make them work this way, you need to configure the jumpers on the board. For each driver slot, you have three jumpers. Mode select 1, 2 and 3 or MS 1, 2 and 3. For the TMCs, you need to keep all except jumper MS 3. For the LV, you need to remove all except jumper MS3. Now, before installing the drivers, you need to install the heat sinks. Place them on the top side and above the chip. Make sure they don't touch any of the side pins. On the back side, you can see the header pins. On one side they are blue and on the other they are black. This will tell you the orientation of the drivers. The blue header pins must match the green ones of the board and the black with the black ones of the board. This Gen L board is not an exact fit of the MKS baseboard, so I bought these standoffs because I will need them later as you will see in a few minutes. Next, you need to adjust the output current for the motors. This is done by turning the little potentiometer on each driver. To do this, you will need a voltmeter or a multimeter and an alligator clip lead. You will also need to connect the board to the power supply. You can use the printer's power supply, but if you do, just connect the power wires for now. Do not connect the motors. I have a spare power supply, so I will use this one as it's easier to show you. Do not use the 5V USB connection to adjust the drivers. You need 12 or 24 volts to do this step. These drivers run very hot and the more output current they provide, the hotter they get. So you need to think carefully how much current you will choose to use. For the stepper motors of the TiVo Tornado, I will be using 0.85 amps for the X and Z and 0.9 for the Y and the extruder. The formula for the TMC2208 is VREF equals the stepper current times 1.4. So my VREF for the X and Z will be 1.19 volts. For the Y axis, my VREF will be 1.26 volts. The formula for the LV8729 depends on what type of driver you have. If you have the one with resistors labeled as R100, your formula will be VREF equals the stepper current times 0.5. But if you have the one with resistors labeled as R220, then the formula will be VREF equals the stepper current times 1.1. Since my driver has 0.22 ohms resistor, my VREF will be 0.99 volts. Connect the negative lead of the voltmeter to the negative main voltage connector pin on your board. Use the positive lead of the voltmeter to grab a small flat screwdriver and use that to turn and read the voltage at the same time.
when compared with the Allegro or HR4982 drivers. These new ones run the motors in the opposite direction, so you will need to change and update your firmware. You can do it now or after installing the board into the controller. I already have a video explaining how to flash the firmware, so I will skip the details. Just check the video description for the link. To modify your firmware to run with the new drivers, just search for the motor direction. Change all the axis direction, including the extruder. If you have smoothers installed, take them out, as you will not need them with these new drivers. Before disconnecting all the wires on the old board, mark all the cables and their locations first, then connect them to the new board. All the connectors are the same, except for the layer cooling fan output connector. You will need to get a JST-XH with 2.5 mm pitch for this one. These you can get easily online. I got these from eBay. You can also get one from a spare fan if you have one. When upgrading from an MKS baseboard to a Gen L board, you might also need to reverse the display cables. You have several options. One of them is to cut out the notch from the cable connectors on one end. You can also cut the display connectors or take them out and flip them. Remember the standoffs? I will be using them to install the new board on top of the power supply. This is because the new one does not fit exactly the same as the old one, as I mentioned earlier, and this way I get the drivers in the path of the airflow from the enclosure fans. If you don't provide enough cooling to the drivers, they can cut off and miss steps while printing. If you feel that you are not getting enough cooling, add an extra cooling fan and point it towards the drivers. The USB connector will not be sticking out like before. If you want, you can get a USB extension like this one for example and install it. Or, if you don't plan to flash firmware versions that often, and you don't want to control your printer by USB, you can leave it like that. Close the enclosure and connect all the cables to the printer. After turning on the printer, make a few tests before your first print. Check the axis movement and confirm that they are moving in the right direction. If the axis coordinates increase when they move away from the end stops, then they are correct. Next, move all the axes to the center and confirm that you have all the end stops working correctly. Then, check the steps per millimeter for all the axes and adjust if you need to. I have a video explaining that in detail as well, so check the video description for the link. Last but not least, home the printer and start a 30-minute print. A test cube will do the trick. Check each motor's temperature while they are running. They can be warm at touch, but never hot, so if you find any of the motors hot, turn off the printer immediately and reduce your output current on that driver. If your motors are running cold and you notice them skipping steps or shifting layers, calculate again the VREF and increase a little bit the output current on that driver. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video and as always, if you have any questions, let me know. You can use my Rui Raptor Facebook page to contact me and to check all the news and extra stuff related with 3D printing. Also, feel free to follow me here on YouTube and if you like my work and wish to help, you can with Patreon. I'll see you guys next time, bye!